everyone, it's Maki. The Gundam series features a lot of compelling side characters, doesn't it? These characters not only highlight the main protagonists, but also add a fantastic depth to the world through their own unique settings. Today, I'll be discussing one particular mobile suit from among these side characters. It's the Zauto from the Gundam Seed series. This mobile suit can transform into a tank-like form. The tank-like appearance is reminiscent of the gun tank that appeared in the original Gundam series. So, let's dive in and learn all about the Zauto today. The Zauto is a ground-based mobile suit specialized in artillery, developed by the Zaf military. It was unveiled to the world as part of Operation Yaros, which aimed to attack the Earth Federation's headquarters on Earth. Zaft, having achieved great success with the Zin, the world's first combat mobile suit, posed a significant threat to the Earth Federation with the announcement of yet. Another new mobile suit. At the time of its announcement, the Zauto was touted as Taft's most advanced mobile suit. However, the reality was a bit different. The thing, which was deployed earlier, was developed based on space utility vehicles, particularly influenced by the machinery of the space suit type. In contrast, the Zauto was developed based on construction-type utility vehicles, while the Zin and other space suit-type mobile suits come under the ZGMF classification. The Zauto has a TFA to classification highlighting its different lineage. The Zauto is considered more outdated compared to the Zin. Although the Zauto has a somewhat different development history, it's classified as a mobile suit in the Zaft military. This classification is apt as it has humanoid limbs and fingers. Zaft has adopted the policy of using mobile suits as the core of their weaponry, especially after the tremendous success of the Zin. The term mobile suit is an important element symbolizing victory for Zaft and the Zauto fits within this category due to various factors. Its most distinguishing feature is its ability to transform into a tank form, lowering its overall height for greater stability and reducing its exposure to frontal attacks. It can use this stability to unleash a barrage from its large cannon, effectively attacking a wide area. This transformation system allows it to operate effectively even in rough terrains, like the snowy plains of Alaska, the Earth Federation's headquarters, or desert areas. However, due to environmental concerns inside space colonies, the Zauto did not undergo sufficient testing. Some within Zaft considered it an outdated model during its development phase. Even in the narrative, we see scenes where Andrew Waldfield laments the Zaldo being deployed merely as additional surprise. But when it was announced, the Earth Federation was very fearful of the Zaldo. This is because they primarily used conventional weaponry, like tanks at first sight. They recognized the high attack power of the Zauto and were cautious. When it was actually deployed, the Baku, deployed around the same time, became a greater threat in a way, making the Earth Federation focus on the Zauto and then the rest of it, the Baku could be considered a significant strategic success. Once in combat, the Zauto struggled in close quarters engagements. There were instances where it was destroyed by our Federation tanks, and commanders were hard telling their subordinates to take down a weak enemy like Zauto. However, they are not good at close combat, but are good at long-range combat. The Zauto specializes in artillery and supporting fire. Its difficulties in close quarters combat were inevitable. Zaft had no choice but to deploy it in invasion operations, like Operation Speedbreak due to their limited personnel and resources compared to the Earth Federation. Deploying it to the front lines 
and fighting while advancing is an operation that deviates from its original purpose. Nevertheless, its artillery and attack capabilities were eventually acknowledged as evidence. Its successor, the Gasoto, was deployed in the sequel series, Gundam Sea Destiny. Let's take a look at the weapons used by the Zato. Interestingly, because it's a minor role, it actually doesn't have much in terms of detailed settings. The Zin's weapons have distinctive names, like Paris and Cadiz, but no such names have been given to Zato's armaments. Perhaps this is because the Zato is an older model, utilizing more traditional weapons. On the other hand, this could imply that the weapons are reliable. First up is the heavy machine gun. This is a modified version of the machine gun used by the Zin. The machine gun 2 was designed for mobile suit use, adapted from machine guns used by Zaft's infantry. The barrel has been shortened for combating close-range enemies and missiles. It's easy to see that long-range attacks are left to larger cannons, freeing up the machine gun for close combat and final maneuvers. Next, there's the twin secondary cannon, equipped on the left arm. This weapon is often used in anti-fighter and anti-mobile suit warfare. Its accuracy is often described as pretty good, a somewhat ambiguous term. Its firepower is frequently described as decent, it might not be overwhelmingly powerful. But it's not so weak as to be useless, considering that its successor the Gazoto has different armaments altogether. It probably didn't play a significant role. The chest contains four machine guns. These are described as being used for restraining fire. Their main purpose is to restrict the movements of approaching tanks by firing at them, or to be used against infantry. Finally, the primary weapon is the twin cannon, mounted on both shoulders. It can fire from a total of four cannon barrels. This weapon is characterized by its long range and high firepower. It's often used for supporting allies or bombarding bases. It can scatter projectiles through continuous firing interestingly. When it was initially broadcast in the TV Ami, it fired beams however. In the later remastered version, this was changed to traditional metal shell firing. At the time the Zalto was deployed, Compact beam weapons for mobile suits had not yet been practical. The bears used by the Zin was extremely large and could only fire 3 shots per cartridge. Technically, it would have been impossible to have a cannon of Zaldo's size fire 4 beam cannons continuously. As a bonus, it also has Four smoke discharges mounted on its head strictly speaking. This is not a weapon but rather equipment for emitting smoke screens for disruption. However, it was never actually used in the TV series. So, how does the Zaldo shine in the story? Although it's a side character, it looks pretty cute so let's find out where it manages to stand out. First off, Zaldo makes its debut right from the first episode. Its screen T is about one second very brave, but it's firing its shoulder cannons right after that there's a scene where the Earth's alliance starts explode, followed by more artillery raining down on the Earth alliance. It's unclear whether this attack is by the Zaldo. Given that Zin and Baku are also participating in the attack, it's likely to be Zaldo's doing. Next, it's deployed as a supplementary mobile suit for Andrew Waldfeld's team Waldfeld, who had been requesting Bacchus, expresses dissatisfaction with the Zaldo deployment in subsequent battle scenes. Bacchus takes center stage, while the Zaldo is deployed atop a ground battleship and operated as a turret. The Zaldo is fairly proficient. Its capabilities allow for more nuanced maneuvers compared to the battleship starts, and it can even break away from the ship to attack. 
However, it is at a disadvantage against Space Pilot New Love Breaker, especially when he is piloting the Skycrosser, a new fighter armed with powerful beam weapons. Despite putting up a good fight, Zaldo is easily defeated. In reality, Zaldo doesn't have many standout moments. As of 2023, it hasn't even had a plastic model released however. A model of a mobile suit called Zorak has been released. Is this a successor to Zaldo? It might look somewhat similar in terms of its seemingly high defensive capabilities. But its weaponry is entirely different as mentioned earlier. The actual successor to Zaldo is Gozoldo. This Zalward appears in Mobile Suit, Gunnam the Witch from Mercury, and has nothing to do with Zaldo. It's a mobile suit capable of independent fight, a very different machine altogether. Zaldo fans around the world will have to be a little more patient. Well, there's a little secret about this Salto. Its transformation mechanism is strikingly similar to the Gun Tank Tau. 44 that appears in Mobile Suit Gundam Formula 91. No wonder, the designer responsible for both of these units is Mr. Kunio Okawa, a veteran design staff member of the Gundam series. In an interview, he mentioned that he utilized the design of the Gun Tank Tau. 44 when designing Zaldo, so in the real world, you could say that Zaldo and Guntank are 44 are like siblings. As for Gal, it was originally planned as an enhanced version of Zaldo for space combat. Gal didn't get to make an appearance in Gundam C, but the announcement of Sea Destiny provided it an opportunity to shine. There's more early in its planning stages. There was an idea to make Zaldo a mobile suit that moved by hovering, a role similar to that of the Dom in the original Gundam. Had that been the case, it might have played a different role in the story. But personally, I love the reliable look of its caterpillar movement. And that concludes today's lecture. Did you get a sense of Zaldo's allure? Let's take the opportunity to do some imaginative training. As if you're piloting Zaldo, imagine you're now inside a Zaldo. First hit the subscribe button to transform into tank mode. Press the like button to fire the shoulder cannons. And hit the bell button to unleash a barrage from all ports. Great, now you can participate in Operation Yaros too. Let's fight for Zaf together. See you in the next episode.